أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Today إن شاء الله we're gonna finish the last episode talking about سيدنا عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله عنه وأرضاه We had we had about 17 episodes right now and uh, <laughs> we could have gone more than that but this is fine and uh, they are all they are all in youtube in your your uh, nur al-bayan they are all all the, all the episodes are already there okay so if you want to just go refresh your memory with it uh no like that uh, we we talked about now we are in the last Last stages of you know last moments of Hayat Sayyid Umar radiallahu an. Okay, he's just dying right now, and uh, he made sure that his all his debts are paid. Okay, and he called his son Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu an. Okay, and he told him, go to the mother of. Our mother, Sayyidah Aisha radiallahu anha, okay? seek her permission, ask her permission, just tell her, Omar, Omar, don't say Amir Mu'mineen, just Omar, okay? Omar is asking your permission that he would like to be buried next to his two companions, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anha. So he did that, and he went there, and he found said Aisha just crying, you know, so much, so deeply, tearing, maybe more than what she cried for her father. Is that an indication that she loves Umar al Khattab more than her father? No, I don't think so. But I mean, she was crying so much because she knows that by the death of Umar al Khattab, Bab al fitna the, the, the temptations and inflictions will be open and the thing is going to be very bad the situation after after his death he was controlling everything okay that's mainly that so he went there and he told her okay that's exactly that my father asking your permission to be buried next to you well she said well i actually saved that place for myself but it's for Omar. I owe zero on an FC. I give him the priority on myself. Already, yeah, he has my permission. Okay. And actually, that's what happened. Okay. And and when she died, she was buried in Al Baqia. Okay. And Sayyid Umar al Khattab was buried next to Sayyid Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Abu Bakr. Okay. Then he came back and he told his father, Absharia. Good, good, good news, my father. Yes, the Ummana Sayyid Aisha agreed on that. He said, "Okay, now when I die, and you take me over there, just stand by the door, okay? Ask her again, okay? Maybe she was really bashful when she asked when she when you asked me for the first time. Maybe she changed her mind. Maybe she, you know." But ask her again, okay? So they did that, and she she accepted that, and he was buried next to his two beloved companions. Okay. Now, right before he died, he wants to know. He wants to make sure that he's leaving the ummah in a good shape. He wants to find somebody to you know to take over after him. Okay, to be an emir after him. Okay, he cannot really appoint anybody, okay, but he chose six people and among all of them, six people from the ten which are have glad tidings for going to Al Jannah. Six of the ten. Okay. Any, any of them is really eligible to become Amir Mu'minin later on. But he didn't point out any 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 particular one. Okay. So what what he chose, he chose Osman ibn Affan, he chose Ali ibn Abi Talib. Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas, Abdul Rahman ibn Awf, Talha ibn Ubaidillah, Az Zubair ibn Al-Awf. Okay, so he said, those among those, I want you guys to pick up one from you, okay, to be Amir al-Mu'mini. So the people told him, 
How about your son, Abdullah ibn Umar? Abdullah ibn Umar is also entitled to be that. He said, no, it's enough one from Bani Adi. Enough one from my family. I, you know, kafa ahlu Umar wahid minhum. It's enough one. Okay, I don't want to put, I have, I have did too much, you know, for you guys, and I'm going to be responsible. I'm going to be standing among before Allah and I don't want anybody else to have the same thing again okay so فإنني أنزه أهلي من السؤال يوم القيامة I'm just gonna I don't want anybody else again from my family okay to to be asked to be accountable you know that much in the day of judgment and so choose the six okay we will talk about how they come up with Osman ibn Affan, and next time when we start talking about Osman ibn Affan, when he became an uh, Amir al Mumin after that, it's a, it's a long story, but that shows you how he was thinking, Umar ibn Khattab, how, how his brain is so disciplined and so perfect, wise, Hakim. Okay? And, and he chose the sixes, okay, and uh, he said that he chose. Suhail al-Rumi and Yusalli bin Nas until they uh, until they choose the Suhail bin Amir Suhail bin Rumi Suhail bin Suhail bin Suhail bin Rumi okay Suhail bin Rumi and to pray with the people while they are gathering okay and you told them you have only three days you have to come up with someone we'll talk about the details of that next 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 week inshallah okay all right now, we learned too much about Omar al-Khattab. He's really an encyclopedia, okay? So many things we would love to be like, doing it like what he was doing, okay? So let's see what we learned from Omar al-Khattab. It's actually a, a summary, okay, of what we learned in the last 16 episodes, okay? And what can we capture? Good deeds, good action, good manners. Probably we can capture something, maybe, if we capture something and we follow it, it probably will be his companion in Day of Judgment, inshallah. Okay. Number one, okay. He is the only man in the world who combined the three beautiful characteristics. As we said before, al rahma al qawwa wal rahma wal adl Those don't combine together. If you're strong, you very unlikely to be merciful or just. You have the power, you can do anything, so probably you can oppress some people. But he was he was combining the three of them. We we talked and we gave you so many examples about that. Okay. Second, he was Thani Khairu Rijal Bad al Anbiya or Rusul. Thani after prophets and the messenger, he was the second one, the perfect after the sec after the uh, messengers and 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 the prophet. So who was the first one after Abu Bakr? Abu Bakr. And then he said, then Umar ibn Khattab. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Okay. Even during pagan time, before he declared his Islam, okay, he was he was a man of prestige. People really respected him. People always go and ask him. He has he was very smart. Okay. He and and they were trusting him any problems between the between the tribes they delegate him to go and solve him solve the problem okay so he was really a, a really a good man and by his wisdom and good thinking after islam all what he's doing is just following exactly the footsteps of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam Exactly what he was doing. Same like Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr. Whatever Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was doing, he was doing the same thing. It's a really continuation, you know, for Nahj Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay? And he was a very faithful wazir for Abu Bakr. He was a supporter for Abu Bakr. Always Abu Bakr was asking him and consulting with him. Okay? Following the following Nahj Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, any hadith he followed, he heard it from Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He sticks to it. Okay. He, one time he said he heard that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He said, "Ahabul asma ilallah, 
Abdullah or Abdul Rahman. Okay. Then he, he named three of his sons Abdullah, Abdullah al Akbar, Abdullah al Awsat, Abdullah al Azhar. Okay, just a reminder you know, for, for himself. Okay. And also, he was so keen to Musahara, to have a link between him and the Rasulullah. Yes. He heard, he heard the Rasulullah in, in, in a hadith, okay? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, يوم القيامة كل الأعمال تسقط كل الأعمال إلا نسبي وصهري و, 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 وعملي or something like that, okay? Three things will have no value except, okay? Everything except my nasab, my, my you know, relationship, إلا, إلا, إلا سببي Somebody is following, has some relationship with me, and Nasabi and the Sahri. So, Sabi, yes, he had Sabi with Rasulullah. He was his companion, he was his friend, and he had a good relation with Rasulullah. Nasabi, okay, yes, he said, yes, I, I am, he, Rasulullah is my, my, my Nasabi, okay, because he's married to my daughter, okay. So, he's always looking for a Sahr, okay, that's why he went to Ali ibn Abi Talib. Radiallahu anhu and ask for Umu Kutsum to be his wife. So he will have the three of them. So that and Tusqat he could have. Okay. He was he was Abdan Khashian. He was always, you know, he's really a good worshipper. He is always Khasha. Okay. Wakana, as I told you, is a takalam asma. Fulhaq. Okay. You guys, when you are in haq, okay, takallam, speak up, don't worry, okay, speak up, okay, let people know, but you have to make sure that you are in haq, okay, and accept somebody if really debating you, just accept it, but takallam asma, wa iza at'ama ashba, if you feel some people, you will make them satisfied, okay, wa iza darba awja, okay, la maha, la waha, la, yani, la, uh, really, when he deserved it, he deserved it. What is a asra? Okay. He was always very reactive with the Quran. Whenever he hears, you know, anything about the Quran, he really reacts very, very deeply with it. Okay. And we remember, okay, when he was walking at night and he, he heard the ayahs, Inna azaba rabbika ma lahu min that punishment of Allah is coming, coming, no doubt about it. Nobody can stop it. He fell down, he fainted, and they carried him, and can you maridu for one month, he didn't even know what is the reason for that. Okay? He was Al Farooq. Al Farooq, that, that's, it's not just a name, it's, it's a meaning. He's Al Farooq, he's the one. Allah يفصل به بين الحق والباطل. Okay. You know that be so be decisive like him. Okay. No gray area, either right or wrong. No gray area. Okay. That's Allah يفصل به بين الحق والباطل. And you remember when he declared his his, his Islam and he went to Rasulullah and declared the Islam. Okay. He said, Ya Rasulullah, Allah is not Yes, why not? Alayhi bottom? Yes, they are on bottom. Okay, so why 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 are we hiding? Let's go and declare it, okay? So no no gray areas before, you know to follow it. He was humble. He was Amir al Mu'mineen. He ruled almost half of the world. He had all the power, but he was humble, down to earth, okay? Even in his manners, in his clothes, in his Attitude with his people, okay, was very humble, very humble person. People don't, you know, but people don't even know, don't even feel that he's Amir al Mu'minin among you, like anybody like them. And you, and we remember so many cases when he, when he went to the, uh, climbed the member and he, he said, I was so and so, I was little and they're doing so many bad, you know, little things now, I'm Amir al Mu'minin, but. I wanted to discipline my 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 soul because had the setni nafsi any Amir Mumineen wa Lakini Aratu and Fua Dibuha. Okay, he said, Oh, I, I, I was getting to be conceded because I'm Amir Mumineen and I am having all the power. So I went up and I humiliated myself in front of everybody because I don't really get conceded. I wanted to 
discipline my my nafs. Ahtaram al kabir. He respected the eldest. Okay, always respected the eldest. Okay, well, izgal li kalam Allah wa ahadith al Rasul. And was always listening to kalam Allah and always following the hadith of Rasul. Okay, and we remember. Okay, kalam Allah. Okay, you remember when he was talking to the people in the masjid about the dowry for the women. Okay, not to exceed hundred or four hundred dinar or or dirham. And Khawla bin Thalaba stood up and she said, no, you don't have the right to do that. Because in the Quran it says, you can do this and this and this and you can go more than that. Exactly. And because of this humble guy, he didn't insist about his opinion or he didn't for enforce it. Okay, he said, Sadaq al mar'a wa akhta al Very humble guy. al ghira shadid ala al-Islam wa al-Muslimin wa hubbu al-Islam حوله من إنسان سلبي لا قيمة له قبل الإبداع إلى إنسان إيجابي كين دفعه، okay because he loved the Dean Islam and Islam really converted him from being an English boy guy in the beginning he was he was drinking you know he was he was worshiping idols and stuff like that just a regular person but when he believed in Islam and he declared Islam see how prestigious he became how good guy is this is Islam this is the power of, this is the miracle of Islam. This is the miracle of the Quran. If you believe in the Quran, you become something really very important. This is the miracle of the Quran. Of course, al-balagha, wal-hikmah, everything. But if you really believe in it, very good. And if you really follow the, the right lines of it, you become from nothing to something really big. Okay? He was one of the muhaddithin. He was, you know, we, we, we know his muwafaqat Omar. We know he's inspired to so many things and he sees it, okay? And Al-Quran just the same, with the same meaning or exactly what he said. Yes. We, we mentioned so many muwafaqa lah. Okay? Hubbu shayil rasulillah. He loved, you know, Rasulullah so much. And you remember when he was walking with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he told Rasulullah, Wallahi ya Rasulullah, I love you so much. Then Rasulullah told him, you love me more than your your family? He said, yes, more than your kids? Yes, ya Rasulullah, more than your parents? Of course, ya Rasulullah. More than yourself? No. He said, no, right away. I mean, guy is straight. Okay, didn't even think. Then Rasulullah said, Then Umar stayed just for a few minutes and he came back. He said, Ya Rasulullah, Wallahi, I love you more than myself. More than myself. Okay, so. And also, he was so anguished when he heard that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, okay, divorced his, all his wives, okay, he heard that, and he was so anguished, and so, so mentally disturbed, you know, he, he said, I hope it's not really true, okay, and so he was really trying to ask Rasulullah and find out the reality of that, okay, uh, and he was also happy when Amr Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Al-Abbas, when Al-Abbas declared his Islam, he was happier for that event more than if his father, Al-Khattab, was declared his Islam. Why? Because the declaration of Al-Abbas to Islam is going to make Rasulullah happier than Al-Khattab. Okay? And when Rasulullah saw a dream, okay, not a dream, a ru'ya, okay, that he's walking in the Jannah, Okay, and he found a beautiful palace, and he said, for whom this palace? Okay, this is for Umar ibn al-Khattab. Okay, and he found a, a woman, beautiful woman, okay, is washing up. Okay, so Rasulullah, he remembered that how jealous Umar ibn al-Khattab for his woman, and he just turned away. Okay, and he was telling that story to his Sahaba. Okay. Oh, I, I, I turn I turn away because I know you, yeah, Omar, you are, you are so jealous and you are so keen about your wife. And then he said, 
I miss Yar or miss the Kaya Rasulullah. Do you think I'm going to be jealous of you? Okay. So this, this actually shows that, you know, the intimacy between him and Rasulullah. How much Rasulullah he loved him. Okay. Always in front of him, always is going by, by the fact that he heard the hadith from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah was saying, whoever being designated to take care of Al-Ummah, al-Muslimin, Whoever takes care of, becomes a ruler, or a governor, or, uh, you know, a hakim, okay, for Muslimin, and if he doesn't really work hard for them, okay, uh, he is not going to be with them on the death. So he's always making sure, number one in his life, just to take care of the welfare of all the Muslims, okay. Okay, and we and we, we talked about what he did in all his ten years and six months. What he did all, he did this and this and this and this, so many things. Okay, and he was so kind to the, all the people, and he was so kind to the people of the book, not only Muslims, for the people of the book, for the Jewish. You remember the old Jewish guy who was really begging people to pay the gizi, and he said, well. We took it from you when you were young, and now you are old, and we're forcing you. No gizya for the old people, no gizya for, for the orphans, no gizya for the old women, and all of those stuff. He's, he's Jewish. And when he went to Bet al Maqdis, okay, and he, he prayed in, he, he was in, the, in one of the churches, churches there. He didn't want to pray in the church, he prayed in the street. Why? Because I, I, you know, I want the church to stay as is. Because if I pray in it, people would might construct a mosque on it and say, Omar Papa prayed here, so again. so I want the pray all the churches to stay the same. So this is a sign of respect to all the other religions, not only Islam, Jew, Judaism, and Christianity. Okay, I said as much as I said. Okay, I, I hope I, I, I relate some information for you. Okay, فإن فإن أصبت فهذا من فضل الله وإن أخطأت فعلي خطأ. جزاك الله. جزاك الله خير. الله يكرمك إن شاء الله. الله يكرمك. لا إله إلا الله العظيم الحليم. لا إله إلا الله رب العرش العظيم. لا إله إلا الله رب السماوات ورب الأرض ورب العرش الكريم اللهم نسألك الجنة ونستجير بك من النار اللهم اجعل خير أعمالنا خواتيمها ولا تمتنا إلا وأنت راض عنا اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من النار وشر النار وزقوم النار ونسألك الجنة ونعيم الجنة وصحبة الرسول الكريم والصحابة رضي الله عنهم والنظر إلى وجهك الكريم وأخذ دعوانا أن الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين